Hey guys, welcome to the channel. Today we're gonna we're gonna be making stuff like this. I want to show you how to do different different things laying around, and maybe give you all guys some ideas on doing some pull. Stick around. This could be interesting. All right, let's do a couple of fulls. The first ones I'm gonna show you. Like this one. Now this one, this is a uh, mats that goes into your cabinets to keep stuff sliding around. You probably have these laying in your kitchen cabinet right now. Uh, these work pretty good. There's different ways to do it. You can lay this, lay the mash on top of it, roll it. We'll try that. It's still kind of. We'll do face down on this one. And uh, you can use a roller like this. It's for pasta. Or you can just take something smooth and roll it out. So we'll just we'll try this one first because this needs to squeak real loud. We'll see what it does. Let's see, I didn't do hardly anything on that one. So let's put it down on the hard part and use something that's got a little more pressure. Something you can put a little bit more pressure on. Now that made a, a pretty neat looking little pattern. So, okay, we got that one. Something else you guys might have laying around. Especially if you're airbrushing lures. Just that little, I can't remember what's name of it. I'll put a link down in there. Description where you can get it. Fold it over twice. Let's see what I'm going to use this. I don't know if I can get hard enough pressure with this. Roll it back a couple times. I can already see a pattern on this one. Turn this light off, see if that helps. Let's switch my lights around here. That makes a pretty good little pattern. We probably got this laying around. Alright, we'll check. This is another pattern I use for painting scales on fish. It's like a little net. I don't know if you can see that. Let's see what this one does. Actually, I'm going to have to take that out. I'm dropping everything. Nice little octagon pattern. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Okay, that is what, what is that? Three different patterns, just stuff I got laying around. This is another one. It's basically this come out of a, uh, like a little carrying case. It's like to hold uh, your batteries or your Cokes in place. So I mean, this is another one. We'll do this one face down. Because if you pattern to the side, you need to do face down. But then again, we'll change it up and I'll show you how you can change it up to get actually a different pattern out of the same one. So let's do this. That's a pretty little pattern. Now what if we want to add a little bit to this? Let's say we want to do something a little different. We'll use uh, something like this. It's got a little ridge on it. This is off of a, a extracto knife, like this one. But I actually found one that had this grip down on the side of it. Or if you have something like this, which is for clay. So 
Now we got this pattern. Let's see if we can change it the look up by just adding something on the top side at the same time. Now it's got a lot more. It's got the same pattern. Well, I'll tell you what. Let's do this. We'll do a fresh one with this one, so we'll get everything's in line. I don't know if that'll show up on camera or not. But there's a lot more dots. And that makes a pretty good little pattern. Let's see what else I got laying around here. Okay, we got this laying. Here is something else I use. Let me get it off there. I'll have to take it out. This is off an orange bag. You know, the little halo oranges, I think what they call them. Big scale pattern, or big pattern, I should say. Let's put that down there and see what we can get on this one. Mm, I kind of like that one. That's kind of big and bulky and got some crazy stuff going on. That looks good. That's just an orange bag. Doubled over. I bet if you singled over it wouldn't be. What if you single over you're just going to have big ones. I wonder if I double it over again like that. Let's see what that'll do. I hope I'm in focus. I need to move over here a little bit. I might have been doing this whole thing, not even in focus. And I have a lunar rod somewhere, it's a bigger one, and I cannot find it anywhere. I've probably walked over it a hundred times. That's what this looks like. That's racked over four times. Two times. It looks completely completely different compared to this one it's still yet cool let's see what else we got here lurking in the okay we got we got this one this is super super fine mesh I don't know if this will even show up I haven't tried this one let's find out I'm gonna float away. Oh, I see a pattern already. I don't know if y'all be able to see it or not. Really, really, really fine. That looks good too. I like that. There's another one out of something that you may have laying around. Of course, if you, you full baits every day and do it for years, you probably got stuff laying all over the place to do different things. There's a lot of cool different stuff out there. But if you're getting beginners, beginner or just kind of getting into it, there's stuff laying all over the place. I got my hat. I wonder if I can get my hat in there. It might be tough. You know what? I'm going to give it a try. Little hat in here. I don't know if I'll be able to do that or not. I sure ain't gonna cut my hat up. I'll just get it to lay down. Just part of it, just a piece of it. That way we kind of get an idea. Okay, that's a hat. It's kind of moved around on me, but it does have a pattern. And it would work. Hat on. Okay, or you can do. I got these little deals. This is actually off. You know, on that. Something similar to these, but this came off a little heat gun. I mean, you can use this. You could actually use this on the lure after you already got the full on if you want to, and just do a. 
back and forth like this. That's my only thing I use this is like the corners around over. It kind of textures it up. But that's an option. Let's see what else I got laying right here in close proximity. Um, I'm gonna have to cut some more of that. Oh, here we go. Look at that. So we'll let's move in. Well, I'm gonna say that last stencil. This is from I think it's Iwata stencils. I got a couple different ones. This is little circles. But on something like this, where you're doing kind of on a hard surface and you got a little bit, you need to be able to get your foil into that. So what you need, what I got is a mouse pad. It's soft, spongy. And, what you, and that will help when you push on this, it'll actually roll it down in there. I'll show you. I could do, I guess I'll do one with width and one without. We'll do this one with to show you the difference. Bunch, bunch of little circles. Now, if we don't use, if we don't use this, and put one down, I'm not sure, but I, I think you'll still get a, you'll still get texture, but you're not going to get as deep. I'll roll it back a couple times. Patterns a lot shallow. I mean, it work. The patterns a lot shallower compared to that one. I don't know if you, but overall, it looks either one of them look good. Something you got might have laying around, and I got another one. Actually, I got a couple of these. I love this. Actually, had one extra one. I didn't think I had. <laughs> Okay, this is another one. This one's got more like a veiny. Well, I can't get out of it. I'm gonna put the best spot, let's say right there. Do that. Do that. And it didn't do nothing, not a thing. Did I not push hard enough? I'm going to get it one more try. I've used this before. Am I doing it wrong? No, I'm doing it right. I'm doing it right. I'm just not pushing hard enough. I didn't push very hard on that one. Ah! That screwed up on that. Well, that don't do much. I swore I'd done this one before. Got the wrong. I got the wrong side up. Let's try that one one more time, and then I'll move on. I mean, that's good. That's a neat looking airbrush pattern when you're painting. Yeah, not much. Very slight. So that don't work too good. Maybe because the hose ain't big enough. This will probably be the same way. It's kind of like a wood grain. And I got to cut. Let me try this one. I'm not holding my hopes up on this one. You know what? I'm going to try it without the foam. Let's see what it does. Uh, nothing. So that's two, it ain't gonna work. So I have a feeling that this is not gonna work neither. So circles work. All right. Now this one is stainless steel mesh, it ain't mesh wire. It's more like a screen, but it's really, really stiff. So. Let's see what this, I know this one will work, and we can actually do, we can actually get two different patterns out of the same thing. I'm going to do both of them this direction. 
and face up. And this will get, we can get two different, completely different patterns. Well, they won't be completely different, but they'll look completely different. That makes sense. That don't make no sense. Okay. This one, what's that look like to you guys? It looks like the uh, aluminum diamond plates, almost. That's a cool pattern. Now let's face up. What happens if we do it face down? Wait. Is that face down? Face up? Face down? Maybe? Okay. Face up. Wait, I've done that backwards. Okay. Face up. Wait, I did do that face up. My bad. Okay, face down. Now, now that looks more like diamond plate. I don't know if you can see that. It's really difficult to pitch in on that one okay now the next one is probably my favorite most favorite one this is real small corrugated stainless steel wire now this come off of now I don't know I ain't got no words to tell you where to get one of these at where did this come from this come from an off old industrial equipment and it's all bent up and I was able to cut one square out of it and flatten it back out and save it. But also, if you look around on uh, like old radio speakers, or radio speakers, like the old box radios, they'll have stuff like this on their speakers, especially your old ones with metal. Uh, you might be able to find something like this. And this has got a directional pattern. So, now we're going to do two different two different ways on this one. It'll, it'll basically will give you a, a reverse from each other. One of them works good on a small crankbaits. One of them don't. This this way I'm doing this right now, this will actually work better on small crankbaits. But it's still pretty hard to get it to go around on curves because this is going to be actually going to have a really deep pattern. Now your ridges, let's say your ridges, let me get my little corner stick. I need my corner stick. Where my corner stick? Got yeah, stuff all over. The ridges are high and your parts here are low. Did I do that in face up? Yeah, I did that in face up. So, if we do it face down that sounds bad <laughs> you know what I'm talking about <laughs> alright here we go Get to focus in on there, guys. See that this one here look raised and then we're sunk in. Now, this would work good on these, will work good on like if you got a swim bait that has less of a curve in it, like that, it works good. Uh, actually, got one I'm working on. This is this is actually this one. 
and see it's kind of it's kind of hard to get I mean after epoxy this and paint it it'll, it'll disappear and you won't be able to see that it'll look good there's nothing wrong with that that's probably my most two favorite ones right there actually the hardest ones to work with is them so other than that other than you just looking around oh wait I got one other thing that probably nobody actually thinks about if you want something really really subtle and you got some rough texture you got some rough textured sandpaper like this mm -hmm. I'm going to put my block inside there and we'll put we'll do face up actually no, let's do face down let's see how this does Which had a smaller piece of sandpaper. Now, if you want just a texture that ain't too extreme, it still makes a really, really cool pattern. You may have sandpaper laying around, and that stuff will work good. sandpaper. I'm going to try to focus in on each one of these so you can kind of get an idea. This was a corrugated wire mesh. This was the stainless steel. It's hard to tell but they go opposite directions. That's another one too. And you got bubbles. Sorry, I was supposed to put them together so I compare them. I didn't. Cool. Then you have the uh, octagon. Then you have the very, very fine netting. I don't know if it'll focus. I'll focus in on it if I can. Barely see it. Then you have, uh, where's that? Your sack for your oranges. Remember, fold it over twice, fold it over four times. And this is another netting that come in like backpacks or holders and stuff like that. I can't. I don't even know where I even found that one. That was from the non-slip stuff your your drawers, and your cabinets. Let's see. I don't know if I got anything else that would work. We got a. Um, I don't know. I got this. Should we see what it looks like? It's a Christmas meat, Christmas, uh, Christmas theme. Okay, let's give it a try and see what it looks like. You know, might want to do it. Uh, see, I need to go. I forget what I'm doing sometimes. Listen. I don't know if this will make a pattern or not. Yeah, you made a pattern. That's kind of cool looking. That'd be kind of cool on a big bait. Kind of like that. Let's see, what else we got? Hmm. Actually. I think that's all I got at the moment. But hey, just look around your house. You got stuff laying around. I mean, some of the stuff you may not, but 
a lot of stuff you do. I'm on the phone, ain't focusing. Alright guys, uh, I hope this helps, you know, doing some pool work. Catch y'all later.